Historically, the fiddle was was played at square dances Saturday night in remote communities in the north. There's been this 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 awakening, this this rebirth. Kids were floored that there was that many people that would come out to watch them all play the fiddle. It's kind of like a fiddle family. I once heard an accordion player say that Elvis Presley killed the accordion and it was when rock and roll came in and, and record players came in and then tape recorders that this homegrown music wasn't needed anymore. People, you could just slap on a, re a record or slap on a, on a cassette and these type of events weren't happening and I think essentially Elvis Presley killed fiddle music too in the north. It was Jerry Story, who was the superintendent in Area 4, who had responsibility for Cool Lake School, was telling about a teacher there, the teaching principal, who had no idea about fiddling, was learning how to fiddle, and teaching the kids the day after he would learn a few notes. This program is a real grassroots program. I think that that's what's uh, lent its, its success. Blaine Klippenstein, uh, as, as the first person to bring fiddling back into the school division, um, I found him to be one of those quality teachers that you can only find in Frontier School Division and in small schools. As it went from a very small school, basically a one-room school, and then at some point it just it had to get bigger and the Frontier School Division had to, uh, you know, put some money behind it. Everywhere Blaine goes, he starts teaching people how to play the fiddle. He's an amazing person. He's like a Johnny Appleseed of the fiddle world here in Manitoba. It's one of those things that when you see the energy of kids and how kids really enjoy what they're doing, you know that you have to be able to make it grow and you have to be able to push it. The school division really saw the value in it and so they knew they needed someone to oversee it and it was put on Cam's plate. He was just a great promoter of the arts in the school division. And so I, uh, I was really impressed and I wanted to be part of this. Cameron is this, this ball of energy and um, uh, driven and, uh, and I think that uh, the students, um, they appreciate that spark. What Cameron has done is he's really assembled a, a stellar, stellar team of people. And so it was a real mix of instructors but a really solid group of people. Now there's eight or nine full-time fiddle instructors in the school division. Daria Watkin is um, just is a woman who just has a humongous heart. Matthew Contois, um, I would say he's one of those individuals that kind of stands alone. Oh, Joey Adamowski. Well, we got lucky with him. He's a, an amazing fiddle player. He loves children and I've had a, the great honor of working very closely with him uh, for 16 years. I like that Daniel Kulak's hair looks like Einstein's. Of course, the very first reaction when children pick up a fiddle and start to play is like they start laughing. And uh, they're surprised at how loud a fiddle is and how happy it sounds. So it's a lot of fun to watch those kids the first days experimenting with, uh, with uh, music. The question is, how is it sustainable? And we always were hoping that, you know, the way that you wanted to make sustainable is you want to grow your own teacher. You don't just do that overnight. It's a process. I first got into the program because the program was brought to me. I uh, was a student of Falcon Beach School and Blaine Klippenstein showed up at our front door and started the program there. So we started playing and I played and played and Suddenly, I was a teacher. <laughs> when we held our first jamboree in Duck Bay, uh, we brought about 120 students together from three or four communities 
uh, in the Dauphin area. It was just so much fun to get together on stage and play and make a big noise together. And uh, when the whole thing was over, they asked, the first question was, when do we do this again? When's the next fiddle camp? We performed on the stage and people were crying, literally crying. It was so moving and it was moving just to see these kids playing music that we hadn't seen kids play in our communities for a long time. Frontier School Division Fiddle Jamboree, I think they just had their 10th Jamboree, but really it's not the 10th Jamboree, it's, it's I think, I believe it's the 16th. The Jamborees are incredible. They bring the students in from all over Manitoba. There was 500 people walking around with fiddles. And our goal was to make it as large as we could, set it up in a hockey rink for evening concerts. When we held the first one in Pine Creek and there were well over 1,100 people in the rink watching, it was amazing to watch. And there were lots of elders there and elders that were just so excited to see this program, this revival of the culture, of the music, and to see the kids engaged in, you know, some, that was something that was so big and so important in their lives when they were growing up in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. And, and now to see this music coming back, it was just an amazing scene. We get to relearn that, that this was once a part of Manitoba and a part of the northern life. There is such a huge connection with fiddle music in the Aboriginal community and that's in the First Nations and the Métis communities. Fiddle has a long time history, like it goes back probably a couple hundred years in that area. The fiddler was a very important man in the community. Without the fiddler, you couldn't have a dance. It's gone from um, coming into a community and being the fiddler and being the, the most special person who was just, oh, the fiddler's here, right? To, we're all fiddling. The music is a reward in and of itself. For myself, it goes two ways. It's not just me giving. I feel I get a lot. I've gotten as much from this program as I've given into it. Uh, many need music, and I think without music, um, these children would go through life missing something. It gives them a sense of pride that you really find hard to see with kids in some of these communities. Some of the communities are very difficult situations. There is little for kids to do outside of school. Music can um, bring healing. Listening to music is one thing, but playing it is a more personal journey. And I think that um, this is a journey we should offer our students. I can think of just in the last couple of years of a young student uh, who was having extreme difficulties with behavior and troubling situations. And the smile that was on that young girl's face was something to treasure. Because you've seen difficulty, you've seen emotional difficulty, and then now you've seen success. And the difference in the facial experience, the smile, you couldn't have asked for anything better. And you know, when you see that, the division's done well. <laughs>